Welcome to SAS's Halloween Bass Fundraiser with Argue Gaming Live playing Total War Pharaoh with the SAS of Gamers. What is Hello, that? everyone. Thank you for joining us for another session of Archeo Gaming Live featuring SAS's gamers, Kate Minetti and Alexander Vanderwalle. Really quick, let's go over what is SASA. SASA stands for Save Ancient Studies Alliance. It's our mission to reverse the current downward trend in the study of the ancient world by engaging the public and bringing together students and scholars to share their passion for the study of the ancient world in order to inspire a vast new generation of students. We do this by hosting a lot of different kinds of live events, doing research on the downward trend in ancient studies. We have an open access database where you can search resources in ancient studies and much more. Where can you find SASA? Search for Save Ancient Studies Alliance. And on any of these platforms, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, LinkedIn, and now TikTok. SASA's live events protocol. Please be kind and respectful. Listen and ask thoughtful questions throughout the event. Please be patient with technology and those administering it. SASA live events are streamed on Twitch and recordings will be posted on SASA's YouTube channel shortly after the event. There are spoilers during our Archeo Gaming events, but of course, as always, have fun. Don't forget to subscribe to SASA on Twitch. If you enjoy our live events, such as Archeo Gaming, book clubs, and reading groups, please consider becoming a supporter with a recurring donation. You can do this for as little as $3 a month, and you can help save ancient studies. Thank you for joining us. Oh gosh, we're on. We are live. We made it. Yes. Okay. Are are our faces visible? Are our voices audible? Should be. Uh, this being a little finicky right now, so well sure, as always. Make sure on, for the people on Twitch that we can actually be seen. OBS is always OBS is always messy, uh, as we know. So let's see. Let's see. Let me turn on the stream on my side, on my end, uh, 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 uh. and let me type in here because I have the power to tweet, to, to, to tweet, to chat as Save Ancient Studies. Um, so I hope we are visible and I hope we are audible. So welcome everyone. Good morning. Um, good morning from a fairly sunny Boston, eight degrees Celsius, you know, uh, generally, generally okay. Um, weirdly sunny Manchester with our guest, Dr. Jennifer Cromwell. Um, and Brianna, what's the weather like in Cairo? Let's give us let's give the rundown from three continents. It's all it's always sunny, still high eighties. Okay, excellent. So um, that was the weather channel for you. Welcome everyone. <laughs> this is Save Ancient Studies. We are here with Pharaoh, <laughs> with Total War Pharaoh to um, conquer Everybody all of Egypt, free. more or less. Playing as Tawazret because in this in this channel we don't like the patriarchy, but we do like we warrior way, women. Right? Um, My name and today we are joined by uh, Dr. Jennifer Cromwell, uh, who has very graciously accepted oh, our invitation to join us for the mayhem. So, uh, Jenny, welcome. Thank you for accepting, you know, Hi. this this invitation. It's the first time we see each other in like through a screen, but in person. We've been, you know, communicating via emails for several months now. Um, so, Jenny, would you like to introduce yourself while I take Good several victory. sips of water? Oh, hi everyone, good afternoon from so sunny Manchester that I've had to get up close to the screen to be able to see anything without the glare of the sunlight. I'm not used to this. But yeah, good afternoon everyone. I'm uh, Jenny, I'm at uh, Manchester Metropolitan University, uh, officially reader in ancient history, but I'm an Egyptologist uh, with Don't Let the Ancient History For You. I have no classical background and training. Um, I work mainly on late antique Egypt, teach pharaonic history and also from this year, teaching a unit for our third year undergraduates across our department, which is history, politics and philosophy on uh, gaming and the humanities. So research not on games, but research through games. So games is a creative method to think about a range of different topics um, pertinent to different humanities disciplines. 
So yeah, thanks for inviting me to join, especially a game that I have never played a strategy strategy game, never played any Total War. And so I am um, not a PC gamer, I'm a lonely console gamer, so this is completely new territory for me. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad that you've never played this game because you are in for a treat. Um, this this game is uh, well. It is it is messy. It is big. It is uh, it has giant hippos and giant crocodiles because the ambience, um, yes. you know, needs to be needs to be that. Um, Jacob, I think that our faces are not visible on the stream. Like our voices yeah. are probably being I'm, heard. I'm trying to figure out why did there is that better or is it only better for a, a moment and then going to switch back to not being better again find out uh, that's that's a really good question uh i see our faces now all right okay um and okay brianna needs to be adjusted a little bit brianna needs to be adjusted a little bit but everyone's on screen okay so okay we made it that's should good I, should i move to the should oh, i move oh, to I the right the or no, to no, the brianna, left you're, you're in the correct position actually the problem no is... you are fine it's obs that is messing that is messing up with you but that's okay. We made it. We made it. Um, also, we would like to point out that unfortunately today we will not be joined by Brianna's fluffy cat, as the boy is in the hospital. So everyone no. send good thoughts My name to our to our Lord Muvatali. Yes. Um, you Muvatali, who's you know walking up with one <laughs> naked leg again without knowing what's happening. Why does this keep ha keep, ha keep happening to me? Um, the one thing box. that we did not tell you about our guest is that she is actually an expert Weapons in home. Egypt in pop culture and games. Um, and that's actually yeah, how we started times, communicating, right? because she is the editor of a forthcoming volume on Egypt, Egypt in video games. Jenny, do you want to tell us about that yes, and your work so with me. games? Please, please. Of the book, so the past decade or more has seen like just this complete eruption in work on it the ancient world and video games, especially the Greek and Roman world. For. And after Assassin's Creed Origins came out, attention shifted a bit more to Egypt, uh, more popularly, and uh, things got written. Or at least I think it was a drug for a lot more people. And for me, one, getting a permanent job helped a lot of kind of having the scope and the time to uh, diversify different things that I was working on. And I'm very fortunate at Manchester Met to have the Manchester Game Centre, uh, which is across not just the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, but across the university and provides a really supportive environment for working on games, both digital and analog from different perspectives, whether you're in English, history, game design, digital arts, education or other um, parts of the university. And so that opened um, the doors. And so for the past, well, and more since I've uh, been at Manchester, uh, really just free reign to explore the topic and have time and support to do it. And following all the work on the classical realm, it really was obvious the, you know, Egypt apart from origins, was being left to the side and questions about why and so a year ago we had the call papers um to be part of all being well the de Gruyter video games in the humanity series which is doing some really excellent volumes including for example recently jane draycott's women in um historical and archaeological video games which is fantastic. We, we had them. We had we had her and Kate Cook here to talk about you know the the pair of books and then yeah, yeah. and then the Bloomsbury one yeah that, that came out the very beginning mm -hmm. slash very end of last year, um, which focuses on the classical world and so um, almost there. I say this of having two contributors in the chat that I haven't emailed about it for a little while, but you know things always get a few um, holdups uh, unforeseen, but it covers. And what I'm really interested in is not just games that are set in Egypt and maybe like this question of like, what is an Egypt game? But mm -hmm. how Egypt appears in a range of uh, like all kinds of games. So we have um, um, now I'm going to forget every single game, but like there's like expected ones. There's like oh Civ God. 6, there's... Uh, the Hollow Civ games, there's um, Lara Croft, you know, expected. Egypt games that you think about, 
Then I'm talking about uh, Egypt in the 2D fighting game Schoolgirls. And we have forewarned and we have, um, say, walking simulator, but Hajir Kojima. Um, Death Stranding? Or is that yep. Thank you, Death Stranding. I was like, Death oh Stranding. my word. Yeah, there's the Persona 5. And, and not just Persona 5. Um, I published the beginning of last year on Persona 5, and you know, there's a nice little Egypt section and the use of Egypt gods amongst the personas, but it's you would have like it's not an Egypt game. And I'm really interested in lots of um, yeah, Egypt is either reimagined or something is really clearly inspired by Egypt, but Egypt, so like there's this little indie um. Metroidvania tech game called Soldiers, S O U L D I E R. And there's. Oh, oh soldiers. Yeah. Okay. Soldiers, yeah. And one level is a desert level, but you go through and there's giant cat statues and there's pyramids and uh, you get to the Great Pyramid and you're greeted by Anubis. But then you have a lot of orientalizing tropes like these little men in turbans with hooked oh swords who are fighting you. Um, you fight scorpions and the sphinx and the scarabs, you know, it's all kind of like these big, it's like, this is Egypt, but obviously it's not called Egypt and kind of how pervasive those influences are and they go through all kinds of games. Um, like you, not just like, cause games like Total War Pharaoh, rather than being new, are pretty few and far between that focus on the land and historical settings yes. and I think that's also why a lot of Egypt games don't or games that involve Egypt don't get as much a look in because you have to play a lot more range to find them and maybe stumble across them yeah uh I think one of the latest releases is the the Talos Paradox 2 uh is the first one I really... love the Talos Principle yeah the Talos Principle yeah it's set the, the second one is set in what appear to be Egypt. Um, that is not, I mean, I don't know if it's not my type of game. I never played the game. And then I saw a streamer, an Italian streamer that I follow starting that. And I was like, shit, that's Egypt. Oh my God, reception, ah, pyramids, things. So, you know, uh, so when, when- I find something about the first game. Please, yes. Also, um, when the, the, the book comes out, consider yourself invited again, because we need to talk about that book. So, you know, just, just put in my hands, you know, forward. <laughs> yes, I'd be very interested. To, to see what you have to say on it, I, um, I've, I, I'm, I'm really fascinated also by the reception of Egypt. Um, did a very non-scientific video once about talking about it. Uh, the reception of the Egyptian gods and the anime JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, I, I footnote that in my article on Persona, but just like Johnny, is like a more Japanese reception, yeah, uh, rather than Western uh, reception of Egypt as well, and how popular Anubis is, because Anubis is in then uh, Jojo as well, at least the yes. manga, I think, yeah. Yeah, um, although, oh, we should share the cursed image that we were given of oh, um, yes. Medjed. <laughs> <laughs> because Medjed right. is the other, you know, is the other favorite yep. of the, the Japanese market, but we were sent a cursed image of a Medjed that never skips legs day. <laughs> oh, oh, Medjed oh. never skips legs day, I don't, yes. oh my. Do, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure you want to see it, but you will have to see it. Um, in the meantime, I would like to point out that the terrain is really messing, up, messing with, with our chariots. Thank you, Arcanist. Yes. So the good thing about this game, Jenny, is that the terrain and the environment are finally uh, really affecting the kind of units that you use. Uh, so I will let Jacob describe it. Jacob is exceptional and like battles uh so i will let him describe what kind of army we are you know we are please because i'm looking at this and there's so much yes. on screen yeah. and i'm like yes this okay is, Jake, um, take it away he's he's our you know he's our a generalissimo game. so he's yeah. like and he's good at this so please jacob um, tell us what you're doing and what yeah. is going on so we were this, this was i, I picked it because, to, to show because it was, a, it was a pretty easy fight um, one of the things that we get to deal with as Egyptians in the early 20th, late 19th dynasty is Libyan raiders just coming in and trying to mess up, uh, mess with us. So you can see we're, we're, we are in the western desert. This is like cliffs and sand dunes and all that. Uh, 
the Libyan horses are not like super well trained, but in the desert they tend to get some advantages um, because they're used to it, and some of our Egyptian soldiers are not as much. So like you can hover over it, uh, you can see that they, you know, our infantry gets some penalties, but then if you look at this tool tip, the, uh, the chariots in particular, they suffer a lot, uh, losing a lot of like their maneuverability, which is a problem. Um, go! And what, so our, oftentimes what I like to do, especially against, you know, lightly armored troops, is just hold a line against them and send chariots around to mess with them on their approach, uh, because the they won't be able to, to penetrate through uh, a line of... This was a really not fair fight. These are like the, the top-end Egyptian soldiers. You have like the... Trash. Royal Kobe yeah, they're sort of trash. Braves of the King and, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Um, but yes, it is. It can. Be, it can be quite a bit if you are not used to the the interface of Total War, trying to follow everything that is going on. Um, I did not want to interrupt your talking, but I will do a little more to describe it in the future. Uh, oh no, was, that's fine. That's fine. We were, is, you know. Yeah, I'm looking down. Like, there's lots of small things moving across. Because mm. uh, I've yeah, never played but... like any of like the Sim games. Right? I've never been into Sims, which on one part is because I'm not a PC gamer. And also, because I think if I started, especially I think on Sims, I mean, I, I would like to eat my job. <laughs> and, Fair. Um, yeah, so I, I do not own a PC. I intentionally stick with Macs, which are also not good enough to run games. You can so run this game on Mac? My name will be legend. Good enough to, it's a five and a half year old Mac. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, that would be yeah. And Never so, mind. <laughs> yeah, it's it's intentionally it's it's an intentional choice. Don't get a better computer because then you are limited to what you can play. Although I think Civ Six is now on PlayStation. Weapons home. Yes, yes. Civ Six has a. Um... It's imported, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, on everything at this point. They've they've put a lot of work into that. It's like it's like Skyrim. They've just, it's been out for a long time, and they really want like everyone on Earth to play it. Legend. So. I wrote my first ever university die. essay a thousand years ago on Buto. Mm -hmm. First year undergraduate. Oh. Okay. So the, the good thing of this of this game is that they are using the good, like the, the original nomenclature of like the uh, to toponomastic, I should say, of the places. Uh, the bad thing is that sometimes you have to do a double take and like, wait, which city is this one again? What are we? What are we dealing with? Okay, um, we're in Memphis. Okay. Yeah, you knew. <laughs> Um, yeah. So I say the good ones. I'm, I'm the one I'm most happy about personally is Neken. I have, uh, I do pre dynastic stuff, and they're always talking mm. about Hierakonpolis, yeah. and I want to just like yeah. shake the entire field. And, no, just call it Neken. That's what the city it's is. Good. It has a perfectly good Egyptian name. Call it Neken. So, um, so the premise of this game, in case you didn't know, it's easier. Uh, too. It is easier. That's true. The premise of this game is that we are in a civil war. Uh, well, we were in a civil war, and we are. Are we now Pharaoh? Did we manage we are, to become yes, Pharaoh? We are officially Pharaoh. We are Pharaoh. So this is us. Yeah. Uh, we are rewriting our, history. Uh, and we've managed to put one of our generals in as high priest of Amun. Um, but Egypt is still kind of divided up. So we have we're at the, the section of the map labeled Tausrit is us, and then it, it includes the city of Memphis, but not some of the surrounding environments, which were you know, maybe this stream we could change. Uh, we should. Our useless husband Seti is our ally, uh, and yes. he's been conquering. Ask who Seti was in this yeah. context. Yeah, Seti. Seti the second is like, uh, like historically, you know, her husband. But in here, he's like kind of a brute, and he's like a big burly, grumble grumble man. He's been useful sometimes. Um, we've also kind of forced him to become our vassal because, you know, uh, that's you know that's how couples yeah. work. Um, he doesn't have the so, power to say no. <laughs> it's brutish because that's how he's been designed in the game, or how much like control do you have over Tobacco. character design within the game as a uh, Can you modify any of that? The starting scenario is pretty set. Last. So like, the towers are, like you get Seti. bonuses for each faction, and Setis are like for just hard hitting melee attacks and like not particularly subtle methods of taxation and things like that. Uh, and you're kind of stuck in that role versus Towsret, who like you get a lot of much you know, no, longer term thinking kind of now. bonuses. You do have some control, Violence so I'll show you with Towsret. Uh, like once you're a pharaoh, for example, you can pick what crown you want to wear at any given time, each of which have different bonuses. So we're, we're with the uh, Peshent crown, but you could also put on the red crown, 
um, and get happiness, or you could put on the white crown, which gives you more, like, influence, which, you know, makes it easier to get more resources out of your territory, or the war crown uh, for more military bonuses if you need that for a while. And you can pick... Like, uh, the red you... crown is happiness. Uh, yeah, so the, the red crown gives you, like, lo provides local happiness, and the white crown provides local influence. Um, right, okay. Because, yeah, yeah, you, you need to make so sure that the north, people... you're very happy. Mm. Yes, you need to make sure that the people are happy, uh, and there are various ways of getting that. Uh, and you also need to make sure that there's enough production going on, because this is an economy. We live in an economy, so yeah. you need to do that. Um, and you can only get some crowns if you if you are the owner, the owner, the, if you control certain cities. Yeah, so, like, so you need uh, Waset for the white crown and, and Menefer for the red crown. Mm -mm. And then, since we, we pre-ordered the game, uh, we also have the, uh, oh my god, the, the pack of the Avatar of the Gods, um, in which we can dress up as the goddess Isis, okay? Yes. Um, and each different uh, faction leader, because at the beginning you choose if you want to play with the Egyptians, or the Canaanites, or the Hittites, and each faction leader gets um, the vestment of the god that they worship. So for Seth, it's of course Seth. Um, it is, uh, Ra for Ramesses, weirdly enough, right? Who would have thought? It's a moon for Amen Messi. Um, it is Thoth for, uh, for Bai, uh, which is a very flattering kind of, kind of dress. Uh, he, he doesn't look that nice in his regular dresses. And then there's, like, um, some sort of angry Canaanite god for Irsu. And then for the Hittites, you actually have, you know, the storm god and Kurunta, the, um, the deer god. So you can have these, but these were like, are just aesthetic uh, things. They're not like, they're just cosmetics. They don't, they don't affect how you look. The only thing that you can change for the main, right, he worships Moloch, which is a problem. Yeah. Um, they made the choices. So the only thing that you can change for the main mm -hmm. characters are the, um, the crowns and like this kind of avatar of the god thing. For the other generals, you can actually choose their armor and equipment. Well, actually, on uh, the main so, channels, you can, you can re-equip, like, weapons and that kind of thing, yeah. but... Yeah, and you can choose their... For everyone, you can choose their ancillaries, so you can have, you know, things that give you bonuses. You can have wives. Uh, apparently, Tawazret has a wife, so yes. we're... Yeah, you, you know, we're working with a polycule. That's fine for us. We we, we dig that. Yes, you, you can... There you her, go. Uh, Tawazret is canonically bisexual because you can equip her with female consorts. Um... There are no male consort items in the game, but there are female ones, so... Exactly. So, on the one hand... Kind of ooh, that hasn't been hand. adapted. So, it's a game mechanic that hasn't been adapted for a female ruler. You just have consorts exactly. In terms of legacy, yes. In terms of legacy, you can choose either or. In terms of time period, we are at the end of the 19th dynasty, if I'm right. not mistaken. Uh, yes. So, like, Mernep so you begin the, the game with Mernepta being alive, but there's already civil war brewing. Then once he dies, it's, you know, right, everyone's, so everyone's out. The is Ramses II getting amazing. his ass kicked at Kadesh then, so... Or he's How dare you? <laughs> Winning at Kadesh. No, no, no. At Kadesh, yeah. No, so the uh, Seti here is Seti II, the Ramesses here is Ramesses III. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. We don't see his dad, who never gets enough rap, because Seth Nakta was, you know, the, the guy who actually made it all happen. Um, but we are rewriting history because we've decided that, you know, we are not starting a dynasty of Ramesses, we are starting a dynasty of Tawazrets. You're gonna say that the Ramesses won't get assassinated and the, the new kingdom will but, never end because it will be stable and he's not gonna exactly. bankrupt against And prosperous, yes, people, exactly. Yeah. But in case you were wondering, the sea people are part of the game and yeah, they right. come in in waves. Ha ha ha, because the sea, ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> I'll see myself out. So they're coming in. We already have some of them. They're just coming down the Nile, and just, we're just like, what are you doing here? And uh, we've been trashing them. So, uh, yeah. So, also, um, the poor if migrants we... that are moving for economic reasons and they don't have any weapons, they just want to settle. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, the climate change and everything else. So, we are, we're just beating people up, basically, right? 
Um, there is also something to say about the depiction of the gods, uh, Jacob. If you want to pull up the gods once it's our once it's our yes. turn, because you will find several interesting things, several interesting omissions and inclusions. Yeah, so you can pick up to three gods to Standard. worship in this as like state <laughs> deities, each of which provide their own various bonuses um, based on how many temples you build to them and that kind of thing. And we have we are worshiping Anubis, Isis, and Osiris. Um, and then you have Ra, Ta, Horus, Set, Amun, and Thoth as the other Egyptian options that are available. Um, five Canaanite deities that we could worship if we like controlled Canaanite lands: uh, Moloch, such as it is, Baal, El, Asherah, and Yam. Also, the way Baal, the Baal is also that's kind of a whole topic. Um, and then five. Hittite deities, Kamarbi, Karunta, Shaushka, Arina, and Tarkona. Uh, and you could probably guess what we're talking about with the omissions here. The, the, the All for few Egypt. gods that really should definitely be in and are not. Dock the ship! Sorry. And, um, uh, Shaushka is a Satanian they... goddess. Well, well, they have, uh, they have conquered I'm Mitanni offended. at this point. I'm offended. Smart. <laughs> true, no, Brianna, yeah, that's true. Brianna has, Do Brianna has beef yeah. with this pantheon, but she is right. Um, also, yes, Hadu's iconography is the right one, but Yam got assimilated with his pet and he's a dragon man. That's true. The iconography of Yam is, I well, I mean, can we talk about the existence of Moloch then? Like, can we, you know? Can we open the Pandora's box of kicks in the butt, like we say in Italy, because... <sighs> we we hoped we were away from Orientalism, and yet we have Moloch. Yeah. I mean... Can we can we ever... I mean, can we have a Tophet while we're at it? You know, just saying, I'm just saying, right? Hello, welcome, welcome, I'm monitoring the chat in the meantime, people are trickling in. Um, and we have very few female Egyptian deities. Where are the ladies, apart from Isis? Mm -hmm. and, in, and in particular, and this is one that we've probably mentioned every time because it's an annoying omission every Emma, time. Beautiful. Where's Sekhmet in this war game? Yeah. No, you don't need Where's... to have an angry goddess. Or even Neith. Yeah. Or, yeah, or Neith, exactly. Yes. Or, or Montu. If we want a male, right? I was going to say Montu, ah, I'd expect bravo. in terms of the 18th, 19th dynasty, you know, who follows who supports Pharaoh in battle. It's Amun, Ra, and Montu. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Also, mm -hmm. yes, Arcanist in the chat points out that Moloch ties into Irsu's whole thing because he's a rampaging barbarian who venerates strength, more... doesn't value cooperation, and wants to burn down civilization. Slightly charged, right? Sli just slightly, just a touch of Orientalism there, mm -hmm. right? Uh, just a touch of, you know, of, oh, look at these barbarians. So the Canaanites have been othered in this game, so you have... You can play as them, though, but you play as... Uh, so you can either play... It's it's weird with the canonized, because the one canonite that you can play is actually Egyptianized, because it's Bai. Um, or, you know, the people who like him call him Bay. Uh, and the other one is Irsu, who's a warlord who burns things, and you actually get achievements for burning many things. So they... Basically, this is the Egyptian Kool-Aid applied to a video game, right? Yes. Uh, it's... Uh, it's... It's... Kind of, because the, the Hittites get actually like a good treatment, but the Canaanites, oh no, those are barbarians. Or, or scheming oriental, so like, wow. Uh, why didn't we give them, you know, the moustache and the beard that they can twirl while we were at it, right? Um, and get, I don't know, Aladdin's Jafar. But yeah, it's um, some choices are, are something. Yeah, also Kurunta is depicted as a psychotic man because he's, uh, he, he, he's the incarnation of the... Of the um, the dear god be as a theonym. But then again, all of the... Most of the Egyptians also have a theonym, right? I mean, Seti, hello, literally. But uh, he's... Yeah, so there are choices made uh, in, in terms of othering people. So it's clear that, like, you're kind of supposed to play as the Egyptians for the main campaign. Ideally, you're supposed to play as Ramesses. It's in the title, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they they were very explicit that they designed mm -hmm. Ramses to be like the protagonist, which is why we don't play as him. <laughs> we're like, I mean, no, no. I have a soft spot for Ramses the Third, although um, 
every time, every year I teach him, I think of the book, um, is it O'Connor and I forget who else, um, Ramesses III, Egypt's Last Hero. And I'm like, oh, for God, hey, you know, this... Well, uh, that's how he yeah. wanted to depict himself, so... Uh, Brianna, do you want to tell us about that book? <laughs> I fight for Egypt! Um, it was uh, co-authored by Eric Klein, no? Yep. Who is or the... co-edited. The, the, who is the consultant, who is the consultant for this consultant game? Who is the consultant on this game? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So that that explains it, uh, but um, it's it's always uh, it's always fun. No, go go, Brianna. We've been we've been connection. we've been chilling and chatting. Um, well, actually, this has nothing to do with what you guys are talking about, but I wanted to jump in and say how I met Jen, um, which was <laughs> at a conference in Leiden, and we were all <laughs> we were part of a. Um, of a session on reception or entertainment or whatever session was called mm -hmm. and so at uh at, w at another like little conference symposium thing we were also in that together as well and so we got into the chat and we were all saying oh when we meet in Leiden we should play board games because Jenny is all about ancient Egypt board games like board games about ancient Egypt I mean and um just start so seeing some stacks a behind really me. awesome game Oh, <laughs> you got them on, <laughs> on display back there. Um, but yeah, she bought a great game called what was it? Sailing toward Osiris. What was it called? Something Osiris. Toward As, Osiris. Yeah. So all of us in our in our uh, session group, we all met up at this hotel and we started playing this game. <laughs> and all these <laughs> Egyptologists were coming in, like named Egyptologists Why were Egypt? circling around, seeing what was up, and <laughs> pretty funny. And, and it was just Had great, been... great way to meet. All will remember 2000, me. this is not age me, 2007 was my Death first big Christ international Christ. conference. <laughs> like 16 years of doing circuit. And it was one of the more fun and relaxed nights. And just being like, no, I'm not going to go do that. Because we are and playing a board game end. in the lobby of this hotel. Please do come and join us if you want to see. Um, and as the one, while other members uh getting like having a few more libations to help through it but to yeah, it was it was really nice because it's you know one sides of board games compared to video games is you need at least one person often two or three more people Perfect. and you need space uh to put out and uh you need to be paid enough to not launch into massive fights about not understanding the rule set because you don't have tutorials to guide Stop you through it tower. and um, you can't pause and look at the um, whatever mechanics and uh, anything else that you know video games help with you don't have any paint on the walls to Every show you where to climb counts. or you know anything like that and for yeah, us coming together and having a successful game uh, and just to say yeah it's set toward Osiris Gods so the premise is that Pharaoh has died and he died without any children and so he doesn't have a biological heir and officials in the country are competing to become and they do in the only egyptian way by just building the most and the best monuments so there you go you which is exactly what we're doing here because yes. we started we started Why a big monument necessary? Yes, we are... Uh, build pylons. Tell me, sorry, Jacob. Yeah, what are we building? Yeah, we are um, yeah. currently working on the, the, the legacy of Khufu, um, the builder. And we are trying to build five giant wonders, each of which will improve our legitimacy and our production and all this. So we have the, the Black Obelisk, uh, which is... We're starting it up here uh, in Khetman. <laughs> um, but you also have gardens... Uh, big New Kingdom thing, of course. A mortuary temple for ourselves located inexplicably on the east bank of Thebes. Uh, a pyramid your... and a set on of the east bank statues. can just. So, was it to build on the east bank can just piss off a mortuary temple that doesn't become part of the beautiful valley of the festival because that's going to skew up everything? Yep. Yeah. 
So we are we are ruining we are ruining Christmas for everyone. Yeah. We are the Grinch. You heard it here My first. <laughs> we have become the Grinch. Processional roots. Like who's gonna come out to watch the bark go from Karnak to wherever the hell is at your building? Yeah, like and who's gonna get drunk <laughs> and make babies during that festival? You know? I in the temple just... probably. Yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> waiting on the West Bank like, oh god, it's got like an extra week on this festival. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, right, decided to build in a really obnoxious place. Exactly. Trump, ah, typical. Me. Typical, you know. We need more blood. Trust the yes. women. Is the, uh, is the black obelisk a reference to the actual so-called black obelisk? Because there is a... There is an, um, a stela that's Assyrian, I believe, or Babylonian, one of the two. Yeah, that's it's, the, it's, 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 the black obelisk from an The black obelisk. Yeah, I actually showed that in oh, class. Yes. Brianna, you yes. made that slide. That's how I know that obelisk exists. <laughs> camels on it, which is how I know it exists, because it's one evidence of um, the yes. introduction of camels into Egypt, like yes. hundreds of yeah. years after this. Yeah, 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 exactly. And and people prostrate. And then there's some uh, weird, some weird things. There may or may not be monkeys, but may or may not be pygmies on them. Um, so who knows? Who knows? They're like small humanoid figures with little hands uh, and a tail. And my, my students were like, yeah. huh? And I was like, well, don't ask me about possibly a monkey. I mean, if you didn't know what a monkey looked like and I told you, oh, they're small, they got limbs and they got, you know, thumbs, maybe. Um, people explaining what a kangaroo is without having seen one and trying to draw a kangaroo. Uh, people explaining what a hippo is without having seen one, or a rhinoceros, right? I mean, hello, Herodotus in Egypt. Um, yes, so... <coughs> so these things happen. Um, in the meantime, we are expanding, oh shit. Um, and these people want oh, to beat our asses. To withdraw. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, that was a there are... There are a little too many Libu people. These are not the Libu, right? These are the people of the Oasis, where yeah, they are Libyans, as you can see. Yes, so we will we'll fight this Destroying one out. Destroying the temple. To, um, yeah, we are trying to take take control of the Oasis from the Libyan tribes, and then also, and probably more importantly, fend off the, uh, the, the large... Basically, there's this one alliance of upper Egyptian states, or really lower Egyptian states, that we need to get through. Um, and then we will be in control of basically all of Egypt. Oh good, they're starting us off in a sandstorm. How fun. Well, it's lovely, right? So sometimes you can wait for better uh, weather conditions, but sometimes you can use the weather to your advantage. And some factions have bonuses if they fight in particular conditions. Like um, the Hittites of Shupiluluma have bonuses if they fight in a storm, because the storm god is their god. I think Seti's troops have uh, bonuses if they fight in a sandstorm, because Seti... Yeah, because it uh, does Seth. it, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Uh, for us, we just have, you know... I mean, our bonus is that we're good. <laughs> That's our bonus. <laughs> you know, our bonus is that we are excellent and we are great. Blessed by um, the gods anyway, so... Exactly, I mean, we are Pharaoh after all. Um, also, yes, um, pointed out in the chat like a, a few a few minutes ago and then we, we talked about something else. Um, one of the gods that is also missing, and it's actually recognizable in pop culture, would be Bastet, right? Where are the cats? We are in Egypt, in pop culture, where are the cats? Where are the kitties? Right? Give us the animals, give us the fluffy kitties. Uh, but she's not even there, we don't We don't even have like a cat god or goddess in like, the Egyptian Sekhmet pantheon, which is... Great. Obvious. Yeah, it's... Right, big kitty? Yeah, but no, said, not even that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, there are glaring omissions. Um, they may or may not be addressed with the uh, DLCs, because with the DLCs you get new factions. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, and apparently a new campaign, which we are very curious about. Yes, I, I, I'm really excited to see what they end up picking as their the DLC stuff. Um, I think I and a lot of the rest of the internet are very excited about the idea of an Assyrian campaign, like getting the middle Assyrian Empire. Oh. And yes. the Black Obelisk. Yes. <laughs> right? That would be that would be a really cool choice. The Nubians. So if we're going to push us later to see Assyrians, have the Nubians come up? Have... Uh, we have, so Amun Mess is, acts as a Nubian leader in some ways, in that he is in Nubia and draws heavily upon Nubian soldiers. But he's, of course, not a Nubian. 
Um, <laughs> and that's also one of the things that I suspect is going to be like a, at least one native Nubian and at least one native Libyan leader. <laughs> Uh, added yeah, Amen Messi is a very, a very pale, scantily dressed Egyptian, like ruling over colonial subjects. So, you know, so I hope we will get the Kushites, like the actual Kushites. Yeah. You come up and just screw up the cell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could, you know, we could conquer everything. Uh, I'll see. I mean, we could, may, we may or may not get some messy. Like a proper Libyan dynasty as well. If we're going to go full third intermediate period about this, and yes, yes, make things exactly interesting. Right. Give us, give us the Ozarkon. Give us, you know, so give us the the. What are their names? The Pina Gems. No, the Pina Gems are the well, they're relatives. That's fine. They're, they, it works. <laughs> Yeah, the Nimlots. Yes, thank you. Give us, you know, give us the the silver sarcophagi. The guy that I like to say take a lot. <laughs> yes, he takes yes, a lot of stuff. That, I mean, he does. It's just taking uh. all the beaches. <laughs> they are taking the stuff. What is their it takes banner? Yeah. It takes a lot. The... What? It is like two got... jackals eating out of a palm tree. Shouldn't it be? Sh shouldn't it be like two goats? Yeah, I have no idea. That's like a master of animals. Like it's very Mesopotamian. But... Yeah, but like with the with the wrong with the wrong kind of beasts. Because like if you have if you have like a a, yes. a palm tree or a tree, you usually have the goats, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. With chariots in the desert. Well, I'm really happy to see that they haven't gone. Sod it, let's introduce camels because they're good in the desert. Because there are no, well, apart from like a Paramesis bowl with possibly a camel. Maybe, maybe. It. Yeah, like, you know, it's one of the greatest ana uh, anachronisms in a lot of Egyptian pop culture is this association with camels. But especially the introduction of the dromedary is probably Ptolemy II, like, it's super late. But that would be like an easy out, right? Okay, what's a good animal for the desert? Let's get camels in. So I'm actually really happy to see that they've decided to make you get stuck in the sand with chariots. You no, know, they, yeah, yeah. they, there are no uh, no camels. No, the only like mounted unit of any type is chariotry. Uh, and chariots, and especially Egyptian chariots, are very realistically portrayed as being not. You kind of have to use them as archers, or they're nothing. Uh, like if I were to try and throw these guys in the spearmen, they they last about 15 seconds maybe before they would just all be dead. Uh, which is or or routed. Yeah, which is quite realistic. So you rather than anything else, and then get your infantry in. Yeah, uh, like you can see, I, I'm just using them to kind of disrupt their formation and shoot arrows into them and, and annoy them, but not really. Uh, they're not going to be decisive until later in the battle. Once they've been worn yeah. down and like, you can chase down straggling troops or like really weak melee units. You can maybe do, but mm -hmm. you're not going to charge full in with the chariots because that's going to go. No, the Hittites <laughs> occasionally will. You can try that. Um, they have some heavier chariots with spears that you can sometimes do that with, but Egyptian chariots, not not so much. But if we had the Assyrians, then we would use the heavy chariotry. You know. If we had them, yes. we could use them. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. But no, you're right. I didn't even notice that there were like no camels and dromedaries. I was, you know, I was like, oh yeah, it's it's Egypt. And like, I did not expect to see them. B I but think, yeah, that's because I, I know. Oh, they're not going to be in it. But it's just become oh, such a uh, intertwining pyramids, camels, desert, eat, palm it's, trees, mummies. Yeah, exactly. You know, these kind of tick box of what do you need. This and it becomes, I think also because Origins is so late, you've got the camels and like, it's the main, um, well, one of the main sources of transport, like Bayek like, gets up and gets on the camel, right? It's Yeah, yeah. Fewer. although you, you can get the very cool chariots in, in Origins. I do love like drifting with my chariot, like need for speed in the desert. Fantastic, incredible. I was so I happy with that. I only used the chariots in the Hippodrome, and then I was like, this is for me. Although, chariots, when I just was playing, like 2017 when it came out, and there was a short crossover with Final Fantasy 15, 
Oh, yeah. So you could ride okay. the chocobo through the desert. Yes. As well. Yes. So the big chocobo kind of hybrid. Um, yeah, the risky and camel. <laughs> Incredible. Go and do a. Um, in fact, a 2015 leap of faith of Never certain areas there. is uh, you could dress up as an assassin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as as Brianna, as Brianna will tell you, the only uh, outfit that we ever play with, with which we ever play when we stream Origins for Sasa is the bath towel. That's it, because it's the one that is like historically accurate, and <laughs> that's all. That's all we wear. The time I played it, I played it with the um, Sekhmet helmet, where you just have the complete. Yes. So much so that I forgot what Bayek actually looks like. And oh then you no! See other people streaming it. You're like, oh, that's what his face is like. Oh, that's that's uh, him. Yeah. We forgot. It was so weird in cutscenes, and you're like, that's a cool. So where's my Sekhmet helmet? Never yeah, exactly, down. exactly. I like, I love you have that it on. Helmet, helmet rock. Yeah, the whole concept of we are we are faking it for the tourists is incredible. It's fantastic, and it's very accurate. Mm -hmm. I hate, like, I love it, and I hate it, but you know. Just shoot. Okay. Again, I don't know if Kate Cook is lurking in the chat room, but I'm writing for something she's doing about um, the presentation of children in uh, ancient historical games. So looking at Origins, so I'm playing it on New Game Plus Easy Mode just to go around and just following children down the streets of whatever village or Alexandria to see what children do and see what side quests they're involved in or Fit. mentioned. So, we, so our theory for children Assassin's Creed is they are either uh, scammers or dead. There's no in between. You follow that's them that's my experience. Right? Once you know, that's my. Uh... Go, go. Or he's running. Like, because they're so. Like, their little legs, right? The devs were clearly concerned about how much they would slow down everything. So they're always in a rush to get nowhere, and sometimes they stop and play with a ball, and they'll have a ball which is kind of yeah, like this ball, but with like the string around it and solid. And they'll just um, sometimes they eat. Um, one couple that I followed sat down and pulled out a limestone ostracon covered in hieratic text. At least it looked oh, hieratic; that. it didn't look demotic. Um, oh well. I know. I was like, but it's then I mean, too blurry when you try to zoom in. Like, you, it's enough that it's like, okay, there's a cursive uh, Ostracon, presumably a school text, but you can't see if they're like what they're actually. There is it, Kemet, or what is it they're actually doing in their little on a massacre or something and school text. But they just sit down and start reading it, um, or they just swing their thumbs and have a chat on the side. Um, I mean, oh boy, look at our chariots. Is is. They're very, um, they're covered in sand. That was like, they're very yellow. Yeah, yes, because yeah. we're finding the sand, so... <laughs> yeah, it's one of the funny things. This, this, if there's a sandstorm in the battle, everybody just gets kind of dusty for the whole thing. That is very accurate. That's um, accurate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, at least three of us here, I've been in a sandstorm, so... Uh, we, we probably, we know. <laughs> it looks like you, you've just bought your minis and you've painted the base color, but you haven't got around to painting the rest yes, of it Yes, yes. Uh, would you say that we have sanded them? Oh. I'll see myself out. Speaking of minis, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask this. Have you played the game Ankh before? Speaking of Egypt yes. games? Yes, I have played. I played with um, th four, no, three of my undergraduate students uh, last semester um, for uh, extra credits or extracurricular activities for a scheme we have at Man Met. Uh, they played board games with me, so we played Ant Gods of Egypt. Just the base, not the expansion packs. Uh, I've got the expansion um, packs as well. And so, yeah, they have beautiful minis. Yes, I have that game, and it is so hard to convince any of my friends to play it with me. Uh, one of my students says, <laughs> shout out to um, Sam, if I tell him this is on, when this like, the recording of this goes up. I'll, uh, flag it to him, time. but Sam, bless him, I, I gave a, I sent out uh, YouTube videos and like the number of tutorials. I actually sat down and watched the hour long plus whatever um, ank uh, tutorial. So I'd read the rule book at least 
creepy and he had watched the tutorial so uh, we managed to get it done. One thing that's really interesting now is so if you play with four players, gotta get devotion points. So I like like the premise is almost like um, destruction of mankind, right? Ra is pissy because no one's worshipping him anymore since on Sekhmet. But instead here you've got the gods uh, fighting each other for devotion from the people of Egypt. And Legacy at is one point later in the game, the person who's in last place loses, but rather than coming out Start of the game, through. the fourth and third place gods form a syncretic form. So they've got you've got like these extra bits where you kind of align it, you can double up on their powers. And the, the mechanics make it so like for example, if you play a soft once per in round, I think it is, Glorious I forget the power. actual mechanics, you can um uh, your power, which is based on the scale, lets you kind of like determine the balance either of troops or something like that, right? It gives you advantages. Um, but yeah, you can have then these... You play just as one mini, but the powers combine mm. and so they're almost syncretic forms of the gods, which is quite interesting. Okay, I put a link to this game in the chat uh, because it sounds it sounds very cool. Well, you can, you can make... It's really a... expensive, but it's real nice. Uh, yeah. Well, you can create a syncretic Aten in this game because you need to choose two gods and you can choose from any pantheon to create the Aten. So, it's oh. uh, mm hmm, mm hmm. How naughty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Last time, last time we had like we had like a a a, a, a gender fluid Aten because we don't I'm care. Gender fluid civilization fluid. Who cares? It's the sun, right? Doesn't need to have I doesn't need to have gender. We Aten actually. It is. It is gender fluid, actually. Right? That was that was my question. Yeah. Like, how is how is the Aten grammatically? Like, is is um, Egyptian a binary? Yeah, because it's binary, right? It's a binary language. And it's called he. Um, it mm -hmm. is called um, father. But okay. in terms of um, representation, pictorial representation, it's. Um, well, it's been argued that the hands are feminine, hmm. and so Ooh. it has this kind of masculine-feminine combination, because I it, um, I think it was Lana Troy who wrote about this, um, because uh, she, I think it was her, who um, identified the hand of Atum as potentially female. Um, For like, how it's used in, in the creative in a way, because... Yes. Twice, then, uh, and so yeah, the female hand. Yeah. Yes. And so it's uh, she proposed that the hand of art and hands uh, have a, a female um, aspect to them, but also you know people have interpreted the the human figure uh, specifically of Akhenaten as being both male and female. I mean everybody in the art is, but of course everybody is, is depicted in the format of the king, so that would make sense. But um, but yeah, there, there seems to be gender fluidity. Uh, I mean, there certainly is gender fluidity in Egyptian religion in general, isn't there? What? Is it the Chester B.T. love poem that talks about having big hips and long neck? And obviously it's later, it's 20th Dynasty, it's later than that, but still draws on these beauty ideas, which, while they're talking mm. about females, is very much fits within a minor period as well, kind of these desired yeah, physiological yeah. qualities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I think wow, you guys so were bang on with the uh, gender fluid Aten in this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's also, it's also enough for the sake, for the sake of chaos. Um, Although we cannot, we cannot colonize Akhetaten in this one. We did, we did when we played the preview, but alas. Yes. Uh, so on on whom are we declaring war right now? Which so, is the which is the question we should always ask ourselves. Yes. Yeah, so right now, all <laughs> of our military activities in kind of this corner. You have the remains Good. of the Libyans of the Farafara Oasis. These. Oh, the guys with the with the with the lions around around the palm tree for yes. reasons. Um, Instead of a partridge, you know, we got the lions. You have the this oasis this is, is controlled the... by the old uh, city governor of I Zauti, have other plans. and then Het Nesut. We were also briefly at war with Shedi, but that was inconvenient, so I convinced them to betray their allies and also send me a bunch of food. 
Uh, there are I some, mean, per some perks to being the pharaoh. Uh, right? <laughs> so the, so the border of Egypt here is at Farafra Oasis as well, so you're not going any further yes. west than Farafra. For now. Yeah, so here's, here's Farafra Oasis itself, and then there's like a little bit further into the desert. Um, but you can see there's kind of like a, a, a you can't go into this territory, and a bunch of Libyans have come out of it, which is neat. Uh, but you know, mm -hmm. our, our, hus our husband is here, he's Mightiest presumably going to help Maybe. I don't actually know if this army's any good, but, you know, he'll try his best. I mean, is it gonna, is it gonna be useful for once? Maybe. Probably. We have hopes that he will be useful. Uh, he's been, he's been a useful idiot. Seti fight automatically and you don't control that. You only control to uh, Yeah, you're, the only, you're only your own faction and the AI, whether friendly or enemy, is, is doing its own thing. Um, okay, so that's why you have to scan the entirety of the map, see whatever skirmishes or anything else is happening, because you can control the one set rather than yeah. Seti now and fight Seti and yes. And even when you find when you fight like on the battlefield, if there's an allied army, you I I don't think you can control it. I think the AI controls the um the allied army. No, only only Which... troops belong to your own official faction. Ever count. Beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oop. Right, um, uh, what is the what's the annexion cooldown? Because we have a godly power, basically, yes. for with which we can convince people in, in to become part of our empire. In two okay, more turns, in two more turns, we'll somebody uh, all will remember me. Probably it's going to be one of these these people up in the delta. That's always a very yeah. convenient thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once you become Pharaoh, you have a, a whole lot of you perks no that you can use, and one of them is this very so? imperialistic convince people to join oh, your side. Wait, we, can, we can upgrade, actually. We can upgrade, <gasps> our upgrade that, around. upgrade that. Up to three regions. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. Presents that you... And then I want to stack exactly. the sword more. Yes. Yes, and then you know, growth immigration. All of, our, uh, all of our Pharaoh powers, and you can pick which ones you have at higher levels as you get more like legitimacy uh and our highest level one is this this forced annexation where we just make people give us all of their land um we can then it's how many court positions you can fill versus relying on other factions to do it uh so you, know, you have this the court do and not be holding distracted different positions by my different bonuses uh Attend and you can uh, kick people out of their their positions and just um you know, for, force their way out, as it were. Mm -hmm. Or That's you can ask all. for favors. Yes. How much the strength of, like, Seti's forces? Does it get more powerful as Pharaoh gets more powerful, or...? Uh, no, he's kind of... Basically, he's he's playing the same game as we are, uh, and we don't have any real, like, ability to affect him directly. He's, uh, so he's, like, drawing on his own resources from his lands and using them to keep up his own troops. Um, our armies, in turn... Okay, actually, I could probably recruit a little bit anyway, so it's a good time to show off. I am um, so this is, to show you as, as an you example, were. this is Tauzeret's army. I know this land. Um, and these, like, listed down here. And different units have different levels of competency. Uh, the, the, the easy UI way to indicate it, like, the bronze to silver to gold divides things up in tiers between one and six where one is like your militia units that are really not as great every idea through. needs soldiers three and four tend to be like professional soldiers and five Each and six will be a are vital the elite part soldiers of only available to the pharaoh or the great king of hati um and sometimes Investing like in a strong your resource. faction has particular units and the most elite versions of them can also come up to that level. Everyone will play their part. Um, but these veteran swordsmen are their tier three units that are pretty solid. Um, they cost some bronze to keep up and also food because you need to feed them, of course. Um, but feed them? Do we have to get Anthony Spallinger kind of maths out now to figure out? No, the game the game takes care of it for you. Keep keeping track of things, uh, but then the highest tier units require gold to pay off.
Uh, and sometimes you can request right special <laughs> units from the uh, first commander if, you know, you are in good standing with him. Yes. Uh, if the first commander is one of yours, then you don't need to request it. You just get them or in your the roster Pharaoh, and you, you can also... recruit them. Oh, Pharaoh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Warrior of Egypt. You can you can just get them, but uh, you know. So you so when you're not Pharaoh yet, you kind of need to climb the ladder of power in the court uh, and try to get yourself in. And then once you're in, you can you know you can move around. But once you're Pharaoh, you can work your way up to controlling the whole court, basically. Giza Plateau already in the game. You don't. That or yeah. have you been legacy building? Yeah, you are, the legacy buildings are for your own stuff, but I'll, yeah, this is something I guess we can show off a little bit, is there are a lot of pre-existing monuments. So you have, like, the Great Temple of Abydos, uh, you know, the Seti Temple. Uh, you have the Ramesseum here, which has been damaged by raids. Uh, Jesser Jesseru. The, the positioning is a little off sometimes, but they're in the game, which is, you know. <laughs> it's a little stretched. Oh, you can read about when the um, Ancient Egypt video games is out, uh, Brianna's contribution and the issue of uh, it's not necessarily being where they should be. Um, yes, Brianna, had, the Empire. Brianna had a lot of <laughs> anger um, when we played Origins about Hermopolis. Oh, so she set tell. everything on fire. Yeah, no, no, exactly. <laughs> Nobody would know. Uh, so she set everything on fire <laughs> and she was Egypt. right to do so. Uh, she threw, you know, she threw fire bombs at the baboon statues, as one does. Baboon I mean, who amongst us? Um, so you know, it was um, it was a moment, but it's it's always a lot of fun. I I'm, actually I'm read glad that. that I had the opportunity. I am I'm, I'm glad I had the opportunity oh, to I'm actually write um, somewhat formally oh, on now, on my <laughs> angst <laughs> over Hermopolis. The hate. The hate. <laughs> But I've justified, uh, but... I think. <laughs> no, it was. It was. When I think one of the really interesting things in games of the ancient world is, you know, the people to it, people are like, it's ever been their hobby or passion, like interest before, right? You know, it's something where you're mm. pretty invested, both then from an academic one, but also like it's a medium that you choose to do in your spare time. And so seeing kind of the passion come through on both sides, uh, I think is one of the things that really more than my value. drew me also to this area. But, you know, it's some of the most rewarding chats and times, whether it's panels or conferences or separate events or anything else, is that you very rarely get people like snippy comments or whatever in the, you know, the audience, right? Because everyone's there being like, it's really cool. Have you thought about this as well? Yes. Or yeah. what about yeah, yeah, this? Yeah. And, There's oh, a it's very... so annoying they've done this. Why have they done it? And, yeah. you know, kind of, it's one of the most, yeah, feeling, I guess, like, personally, not just professionally, but, um, like, the different avenues, different ways of just thinking about subjects and kind of how it re-inspires really a level of enthusiasm that maybe can be shadowed by doing more traditional stuff. Yeah, I feel mm -hmm. like in in this type of scholarship, uh, which is not true for a lot of game communities, but there is a sense of community because everyone likes what they're doing and everyone likes the topic and everyone's interested. Um, but I think that that's like a sweet spot between academia and gaming, because if you're just into the games, then gaming communities can get really toxic. But yes. if you're doing it academically, then you don't have the snooty, oh, this is not real academia, you know, dinosaurs, and you get the people who actually enjoy what they're doing, right? And yes, this is a subtweet. Uh, Brianna knows to whom I ref I'm referring. I mean, <laughs> even without knowing, the perception studies, especially in Egyptology, because it's so young part of the field compared to classics, and classical reception is such a much longer tradition and to it and even so you're going to get classicists that don't think that classical reception is an academic pursuit but yeah you're going to get people being you know unpleasant about it to put it mildly but at the end of the day more people 
are going to be playing Total War Pharaoh or yep. Assassin's Creed Origins and watching these streams or other YouTube videos, they're not ever going to read monographs on whatever topic yeah. we get, right? Yeah. So, you know, they can be sit there and go piss on it as much as they want. But the reality is, them. is that yeah, more people are going to engage with the ancient world, Egypt or otherwise, through popular oh, yeah. culture, and you can people either dismiss it, yeah, or you can jump on the ba on the bandwagon and just Egypt. you know join the party. And also, it, and I, yeah, yeah. It's Go on, a, Jacob. Sorry. It's a bandwagon that lets you uh, lets you play video games when you could otherwise be doing homework and call it academic. So you know that's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's how I started, right? Uh, my first my first paper on on monsters and games was uh, ten years ago. So, you know, almost to the day. It was ten years ago, like a few a few days ago. Also, so, I would show up. Our, the oh, the so temple is done. Uh, so this is... Oh, let's go. Oh, well done. Yes, well done. Also, yes, well thank done. you for being here for video gaming bandwagons. Yes, listen, we like this stuff, right? We are pioneers in here. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> Pioneering! Oh my God! Uh, if I if I if I think back t uh, about that talk, it was it was actually my very first academic talk I ever gave, like the very first Tor, presentation of my life. Something else. Hmm. So being this time of the year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, Strength. those those were days. I was wearing a uh, a terrifying bow tie. But, you know, because I was like, oh, I, can't, so I can't be too serious. I can't be too serious. So I had like a teal, yellow, and blue bow tie. Uh, and Love it was, that. Yeah. <laughs> Have crocodiles with lasers coming out the right. Yeah. Then, yes, know. exactly. That was that was the first that was the first <laughs> time, right? And now, now look at me publishing laser crocodiles. It's always the laser crocodiles. It's always been the laser crocodiles. Actually, when we streamed um, oh, Age of Mythology, oh, yes. I showed up. I showed off the um, capabilities of the laser crocodile. Some people were horrified because we zapped a zebra that had nothing to do with us, but uh, they were, they asked, you know, they <laughs> asked and they coming. received. <laughs> yeah, right, just, she had it coming. Had Shouldn't it have coming. looked that juicy in front of my laser crocodiles. Uh, um, but, you know. <laughs> See, here's Neath. You can get the, an ability called Gaze of Neath. Uh, right, then generals. why don't we have the goddess herself? Yeah. You know, get it together, Gaze. total war. Yeah, does, yeah, does yeah. Does fire come out of the eyes or something? It's it's rapid fire. Is that the gaze? Chariots is what you get it. Um, so I think that's the idea: is you're, oh. you're simulating, you know, shooting fire out of out of your uh, out of the eyes of the goddess with. Oh, okay. I'm really excited. Uh, so also, I'm trying to think that like, I have no like technical skills whatsoever, but like thinking about um, like. Sign or like if you can like make a game to kind of explore ideas. So with my new gaming unit, the assessment, and it's not my original idea. It's actually completely uh, ripped off an article that Catherine Lewis, a medievalist, um, wrote in a volume called Historia Ludens. And they uh, will be pick an idea of a game that's on the topic, and then they have to give like the academic background, right? Like what is the basis for this? It could be any type of game analog digital whatever mm. and uh, like one of my favorites is roguelites like one thing that hades did was it's the only game or popular culture anything that has made me interested or at least enjoy greek mythology um which is in my bag and hades was like was so it's such a beautiful game i love that game so much well, you um, might be interested to know that as soon as hades 2 comes out we are streaming that Lose, I don't know how many hours of my life until I With me, man. complete that. I love, say, I love um, and roguelike kind of adjacent games. Um, as it is, thinking about that as like failure is intrinsic part of it, and kind of what could you do in different topics? And I'm playing a little indie game at the minute called Chance of Senar. Senar! Oh my god! Oh okay. my god! <laughs> <laughs> there we go, and I've just started, I think it's, it's a beautiful game, right? And it's it's got that deciphering Eager. element that's um, it's much more sophisticated in um, Heaven's Vault. Uh, this go around a little bit of um, stealth getting through, because I'm only on the second area with the warriors. 
and that translating and thinking about what you've seen and deciphering and like God. like heaven's fault right drew on the idea of yes. hieroglyphs but yes. also um chinese um and kanji is a japanese word but you know and kanji and kind of how you put together i'm thinking like okay like you could do something I like uh, my brothers hieroglyphs you know we all learn some way and whether it's uh, you know so i was a student in liverpool with mark collier and how he starts and i think how he still starts is using how to read egyptian hieroglyphs that he wrote with bill manley and that was still the premise right and you take oh. the world hmm. text so you start with the offering formula and just oh, kind of breaking it down and working through it and then after that we start working on actual grammar and vocab right and it's going that's through really but actually cool. starting with something that has a book in it and, and a book that sold millions of copies worldwide right um I fight it's a nice ploy to get your students to buy what was in like a 10 pounds book but you know <laughs> the kind of these ideas and like how you think um, about them and like All will there's different me. kinds of categories of games in different periods and also comic books and i've been thinking recently about um lack of egyptian narratives just full stop in popular culture because like you know when you think of oh do you know it's like okay the odyssey the iliads and like greek myth is sort of through it and like egyptian literature for a large part is i think much harder to penetrate in terms of the big overarching one but shipwreck sailor like that's gonna be like would make such a beautiful comic yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Tale of Sinua. Well, they tried with the Tale of Sinua with the movie The Egyptian. It was a huge flop. Yeah. Huge in Finland, though, right? I yes. have um, yes. a friend. It's a Finnish author, yeah. I have a yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a friend who's an epigrapher, and she's got this plan to eventually, hopefully, one day, make a, an animated version of these. Middle Kingdom stories, and I really hope she's able to, to do that. It'll be amazing. Yes. I do. Okay, I will say I have a, I have a conspiracy theory about Egyptian literature in popular yes. culture, which is I, yes. I firmly believe that Ooh, Frank like... Herbert's Dune, the, 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 the middle third of Dune, and probably actually the, the basic plot of the book is pulled, at least in part, from Sinoe. Oh. Ooh. Well, I've I mean, the giant forms. Uh, I, oh, Frank Herbert did know Egyptian. Um, it actually comes up in the third book. They talk about the golden path, but they, they call it the Setcher Nabiu. You could beckons. so he he knew uh -oh. what the, the Egyptian word Death would be for that. Tribesmen. Uh, Interesting. So he had some familiarity with Egyptian. Strike in order to through. get that, I feel like he would have had to have known Sinui. And the plot where your main character is picked, is a noble being kicked out of the palace for court intrigues, wanders off into the desert. Fights a guy for his position, ends up marrying into the, like, the family, the, the, marrying into the family, becoming a chief in his I own right, and then returning blessings. in triumph to the royal court. Feels a lot I like Sinui, and especially the what really got me was the we duel scene focused. in particular, yeah. and it's both where it is in the narrative and how it how it functions. You wicked Egypt! It just so strongly reminiscent. Mm. 70s, right? The book came out in the yeah, 70s. Yeah, yeah, like late 50s. And Egypt will the Finnish um, novel of the, the Egyptian is the rise. 50s? Mm, yes. Aterka, yes. So, uh, uh, the, like, kind of like the different transmissions as well, whether it's whether uh, just a big fan of Always Egyptian perception Bonjour. and. Because like the Egyptian was made into a film as well, I think, right? It's been made. Yes, it yeah. was. It was a flop. It was a huge flop because it was My too slow. Uh, and so then most of the props from the Egyptian were actually reused for Cecil B. the Mill's Ten Commandments. Really? For yes. Uh. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I read I read wow. a whole book on the making of that movie, uh, Ten Commandments. Yeah, they they bought all of the props oh, for cheap, um, and reused them because like, well, it's a big movie. It's set in Egypt. We have so many, you know, people that need to be there in the scenes. Let's just buy the props because they flopped and they're not gonna use them. So yeah, most of them are reused. Warrior of Egypt. Um, but yeah, it's it's a terrible movie, and they also had like um casting issues because originally Sinue should have been Marlon Brando but 
<laughs> what? What? No. Yep. Yeah. Stop yep. It. Yep. Yep. But then, no, no, no. I swear. I swear. But then it didn't. It didn't happen. Um. So you know. So the casting was completely off. Uh. And the music was completely off. And like the whole tone of the movies is bad. So yeah, it, it's like you know, it was the environmentally conscious choice. Reduce, recycle, reuse. Uh. Yeah, yeah. You know. It's it's good at that. That's what Hollywood did back then. So you know. Uh, also from the chat, they are reminding us that uh, ancient Egyptians did have nuclear weapons because that's how they melted those stairs in the temple. Is it Dandur? Is it Dendera? Yeah, that's how, that's how they melted those stairs, right? There's no other way to melt stairs, especially when you walk on them for centuries and millennia. It's not like they, you know, they're worn down. <laughs> <laughs> no, like anyone's ever wa well, walked in up the, the crypt. pile on the Karnak, you know, looks as solid as hell. Or Egypt. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do have the, the so-called uh, light bulbs displayed in the crypt of Dendera Temple, so, I mean, right. oh, yeah. we've so got a lot surely. of weird stuff happening in their cave. There's a... Surely, right? And people might be on to us. Yeah, yeah, they know. Like, big Egyptology doesn't want you to know that they had, you know, they had light bulbs and, and nuclear weapons and big worms that play such a such a big role in Egyptian mythology, which they do. But you know, uh, you know, you know the the saying. You know, I've seen enough hentai to know where the big worms are going. Um, so you know, I did not expect that sentence to come out. As we said. You shouldn't we not are not. It, though. We are not a PG-13 stream here. We talk about. <laughs> it's, okay, it, it, so it's, it's It's Egyptian stuff. It's Egyptian stuff, right? Oh, I mean, wait until we get like a little later, and then we're gonna start talking shit about hippos, as yeah. we always do. Um, yeah, we're, so we're, actually, <laughs> Egyptian history <laughs> brought to you the only script ever used that has to be censored by most internet browsers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, all the That's all the all creation. The yeah, ah, there you go. The chat has mentioned the lettuce. Yes, so yes. you know. Um, oh, yeah, that, that also. Um, if you heard Hamish Steele's Pantheon. Yes, yes, it's a great comic book. I actually bought it. Let me yeah, send I the link in the and chat. Actually, in my very first lecture that I do. Um, for my second years, because um, units here have to they be pitched so that people who've never done Egypt can come in. And I start with the with um, a scan of the first two pages and um, the creation oh, of the world. Without zooming in on our two but... self-creating, but yes. um, still, and it's, it's very explicit, right? Like, it doesn't hide. <laughs> Is that, is that what the kids nowadays call it? Oh, I was just self-creating. <laughs> when I'm, if my lectures are being recorded, it's what I say to a, um, the group of 19 and 20 year olds, yes. Um, yeah. you know, it could be spit, you know, different. Um, I think in the comic book, it may mention spit as well. I can't remember, but it's it's very graphic also when it comes to the uh, lettuce and yes. what yes, is exactly. the thing. Yeah. yeah, and also, also uh, Horus is a himbo, which we love to see. All that matters. When, when I mean, Hathor tells is him, that tells wrong, him, though? It's not wrong. Hathor tells him I'm pregnant. He's like, oh my god, so I did it right. And I was like, yep, yep, that checks out. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so much better than the film Gods of Egypt. Oh my god. Wait, one sec. Um, Can we annex someone with our power, yes. Jacob? Oh, yes. That's what ah, that's why I, I was okay. reading your mind. I have a yeah, fear. Yeah, uh, so we can only annex people to three factions, three provinces, and Shed it has four. So while we had a peace treaty, I marched into their territory, took their least defended settlement, and look, now we can just annex them. <laughs> and look, now they have three. We can just annex them. That's it. Now they're with us. Yeah, See? This it. is, it's this uh, easy. And now the most powerful remaining Egyptian faction other than Ramses is, is ours. Without yeah, having, that is a great. big plot of the desert. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a we got a whole bunch of nothing. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's, this is mostly though. mining regions. So you get like some good bronze mines and gold mines and stuff. But it's not exactly <laughs> uh, big cities, other than Shadi, which is good. We, we now have the Fayum. So where Setnak is, is that going out like the Ramesses fortresses, like up to like Zariatum Arakam and I like, assume how far east? that's what is meant to be here. Uh, is because they, they don't have like so the city of Ammonia, modern Massamatru, and then down, yeah. But that's that's what I'm picturing is this is like 
this is the where if we wanted to we could recreate that fortress chain um, in these <clears throat> outposts. We could turn them into like forts and make this the bastion against northern Libyans. Yeah. The so University for a Liverpool for... student, I have to mention Zaria to my rack. Wisdom and all things. Otherwise. I lose my Liverpool credentials. Yeah. <laughs> so for the for the uninitiated, can you tell us about these fortresses? Because in Origins we've seen the wall of the rulers and the, the ways of horrors, but tell us about fortresses. Mm. So a series of fortresses along the um, northern coast uh, going out west and towards the Libyans, and so the furthest west and the best preserved and uh, the, the most thoroughly excavated is uh, the site Zariat Ulmo Rackham and the statue of the overseer of the garrison is today in um, Luxor Museum. Uh, Arneb, I think, I may have uh, misremembered uh, these defensive borders along the Mediterranean um, coast, but prim principally uh, against the Libyan incursions through the north. And then on the other side, there's like also big, big fortresses to guard, you know, the ways um, on the side of the Sinai Peninsula, because that's the, well, that's where the invasions are going to come from, right? Wrong, they come from the south, which also has fortresses along the Nile. Uh, so we put fortresses everywhere and we get invaded many ways. So. My favorite uh, ones of um, Buhen is um, Golvan's watercolor reconstruction. Yes. yes. And that's one thing I do like oh. about in... Um, uh, in Origins, in the uh, the integration of Golfan's watercolors, uh, so Legacy. if anyone listening yes. hasn't heard from him, he does these absolutely beautiful... I'm gonna link it. I use those if... for art history. So he... So much. Yes. I use them in a um, version of a unit, first year unit, that no longer runs. Um, I was given like a whistle stop tour of like big topics in Egyptian history and with the pyramids I bought a plague like, screenshot from Discovery Tour that integrates uh Golvan's paintings, but they've also got like archival material and a bunch of other stuff there. This is for the step pyramid. Um and a student at the end was like, uh can like, can you really use Discovery Tour's education? It's like, well it's built as an educational tool. Like not all of obviously it's not very yeah. in depth and of it has to be very broad strokes, but the drawing on, like whether it's from museums or archives or Golfan's paintings, right? They are absolute like, legitimate pieces of evidence. Uh, and I think there's a book recently came out, um, maybe on Golfan's watercolors and archival constructions. Oh, oh. I want this. Get a hold of. I want this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, the chat is asking, are there sky fortresses in case you get attacked from above? Well, we have the pyramids that are also like um, like astronauts, uh, like uh, like uh, ships. So yeah, you can, you know, you can you can launch the pyramids in case you're being attacked from above. It's... That's that's what the pyramids are for, right? That's why they're in a line. It's a formation. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, um, Orion's belt, right? And so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like we now have a small problem, which is that these Proud Nubian rebels Egypt. want to burn down our nice, good monuments. We spent all no. this time building. I need blades to my cause. I I don't Sisters. think so. Do we have Do we have an army? Strength we don't have an army probably nearby, but I'm going to raise one in a bite. Can we raise one? Yeah, and beat their asses. I mean, might as well. Are there ever enough? The uh, great fortresses of the Meshresh in Middle Egypt. And just pop them all inside. Exactly, and we have, you know, look at all the chariots that we have. Are they like mostly trash units? These are, yeah, this is, there's a decent garrison that should hold them for a little bit, and yeah. Okay, that's good. Really elite. Oh, I, what I want to, we have access now to the Seneni chariots, Join the me, really boys. elite chariots, like the best ones in the game, pretty much, and I want Tauzret to, uh, I, I want to see him in action on these. Let's see what the, yeah, the Nubian Next army is, time, it's I actually a decent fight. army. This is not, this is not awful. Um, but this is a we have a, a pretty good garrison, I believe, in in here as well. That, that could have fed, fed them off. And we're going to see see what we can do, I think, and how long they'll hold them off. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, look at Ramesses getting all of that stuff. Well, not yeah. too much of it, but like quite a bit. We're going to be dealing with him soon, I think. Um, we'll have to. We'll have to. He's um, just defending his hometown, right? 
well. Well, allegedly. Uh, also, from the chat, they let us know that in military aviation terms, the pyramids are in an echelon formation. Thank you. This is the, like, cross-disciplinary, you know, conversation that we need to have, that we love to have in here. It's important. You go from the letters to, you know, nuclear bombs to uh, military aviation. It's always good. My, uh, my I just waited two seconds mm -hmm. and put my light on. Oh, yeah. You were in darkness. We were like, well, that is, you know. It is late there. Um, so yeah, he's an evil aviator. He will be very disappointed that I didn't uh, that I didn't catch that. How dare you? How dare you? Exactly. So echelon is a stargard line where each next plane is flying a bit back from the leader, while in a delta formation, planes fly on the other side of the leader. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so the pyramids are actually ready to you know take flight to protect us from above, uh, in case the Nephilim come down again. Yeah. I guess, you know, or planet Nibiru or. Whatever. I, I don't know what the kids believe these days, you know. Back in my day. Um, but, you know. Oh, there we go. So we are we are giving... Oh, this guy can have nice stuff. Yes, that's so good. Yeah, nice stuff lying around. So mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. He mm. cannot have a chariot, but it's okay. So the good thing is that if you have heavy armor and heavy equipment, you cannot have a chariot and the other way around. So we're actually following, yeah. you know, the laws of physics. Yes, amazing. Yeah. You can, uh, kind of. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure the pyramid is the ideal spaceship shape, and limestone is the ideal spaceship material. Absolutely. I mean, what else but limestone? It's yeah, well, uh, really aerodynamic, and you know, it's just like the fun part of Concord. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Concords were pyramids. You heard it here first, <laughs> boys. Uh, you know. <laughs> It's not a conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's a fact because you know because we tell you so. Um, ah, the good old days. Also, yes, I want to see the Anunnaki have a fist fight with the Nephilim as well. You know, it's it would be important. <laughs> Who would win at that point, right? Like, would we would we be allowed to bet on that fight? <laughs> what would we do? Uh, 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 Get the chat what is um, to uh, do a. <laughs> chat room who would win right right some um twitch points yes we can get we can get uh we can you know we can so if 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 uh if we bet correctly we're gonna, we're gonna launch a poll and if people bet correctly once you know the apocalypse happens and the nephilim and the the anunnaki fist fight with each other then we will award points in a post-apocalyptic world in which surely you will be used to twitch points <laughs> You know, Amazon that and is. Twitch, right? It's going to be literally the only currency. Yes, in that probably. World. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Ooh, look at Seti. Oh my God, he looks cool. Yes. Look he at looks, his shield. Oh, he had a glow up. Look at his shield. Oh I my know, God. Looks a little gas. Oh. But that is fantastic. His shield is fantastic. That's that's Ooh. Seth killing Apophis, like brilliant. spearing Apophis yeah. from the boat of Ra. Oh brilliant. my god. Absolutely brilliant. And we get some other rewards so because the cool love it. technically nice. helped him, I guess. Um, oh yeah, though, we did a lot, right? Even though he, uh, he oh, th this was him and hippo. me, that, uh, that oasis that right. I wanted. Oh, Look at the hippos. hippos. Are giant. Yeah. Look, I told you they're giant. Look at the hippos <laughs> raging. <laughs> The Look at them. The little baby right. crocodile. Yeah, they wilding. Um, I'll have you know that the, the state of Colombia <laughs> is sending in the army to dispatch, you know, the 200 hippos. Uh, they are now infesting <laughs> their waters and pooping so much that they kill fish and they're destroying the local ecosystem. Right, I wanna, more, wait, like this is a thing this. that's actually happening? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The 200 hippos get to Colombia. Drug cartels. Well... <laughs> Four, yeah, four of them, three females and a male, were brought in by Pablo Escobar, and then they were, you know, left to their own devices, and now there's 200 of them. And they're aggressive, and they're big, and they're covering everything in shit. Um, so... Take them off the wall! <laughs> so, Australia. Yeah, also, yeah, killing yeah, they should, they should <laughs> learn from... <laughs> Invasive species killing with their poo. <laughs> Yes, the hippo self-created exactly, chat. Thank you. <laughs> also, like it, it may be like a genetic a genetic issue because if they all descend from the same four hippos, that's not a big genetic pool, right? So no. There, there may... And hippos now. 
Yeah, but uh, who's who's gonna tell the hippos? Uh, so you know. <laughs> I lived in Australia when I moved to Australia in 2011. Uh, one of the news stories I read um, in the, uh, whatever newspaper came through in the halls I was staying in. It was talking about this invasive species of grass, tall grass in the north, that no Australian um, fauna was big enough to trample, right? You know, and it's it just like choked up the ecosystem. And one legitimate suggestion uh, to uh, deal with the issue was uh, it was suggested to import elephants as they would be the only then species large enough to trample the grass. I was like, no, it's true. Like, in, importing species into Australia has got a really good track record. Right? Great yeah. record. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> the, the mice and the cats and the weasels are doing really great over there. Camels, the camels and the bullfrogs. Yep, wild camels. Yeah. The fucking the rabbits. Dogs. They've got the most wild camels in the world. They've got more than Arabia. Um, it's, yeah, the largest population of wild camels. Oh my God! Well, in um, in the 1800s, uh, a senator from Louisiana actually proposed to import hippos to Louisiana into the bayou um, to farm them for meat. Hippo meat? Oh, no. What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a bit tough. Right? And also, like, how how the fuck are you going to kill them? Like, it's it's it, you know yes. what? No. <laughs> It's it's always a no. Like if if your if your first thought is we should import hippos, the first answer should be the fuck not. Um, we are not. We are not doing that, right? No, 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 no. Uh, Cincinnati Zoo, are you listening? Population control. Sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's just bad. It's just a bad idea. Hippo meat. Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god. Oh, so so I'm sorry. They have a helepolis. Uh, they have a ta they have towers? No, these are just uh Oh, they're oh just, like, okay, they're ladders. Yeah, like the wheel ladders. They siege the towers. They do, you do yeah, get siege a... towers in this game also. Um, mm -hmm. which is a choice I'm not sure I entirely agree with. Um I don't know a lot about oh, yeah, siege, here's, here's siege tower, yeah. But then there you, you go. Yeah, like so the, the um, old kingdom tomb seeds. Is it like the tomb of Itty or this other one showing these ladders are some kind of like yeah, wall penetration and stuff, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. No, that works. Look at our archers just raining fire on them. Flaming arrows in the new mm -hmm. kingdom. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know what? They're a classic. I mean, you, they took away the camels. Can they really take away flaming arrows? Yeah. Can I we get the Greek fire up next? I don't know. I, I do believe in flaming arrows only because it's like it's not a hard thing to do to like put pitch on a on an arrow. Um, so even if it wasn't like a formalized common thing, it probably happened yeah. from time to time. I mean, yeah. And if you have something coming up the walls, you. <laughs> Whoops! I set I set everything on fire. Oh dear me! <laughs> oh, I dropped the arrow in the pitch. Let's just shoot it through this um, torch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know what? It can if it works. You know, if it ain't broken. Oil lamp. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, at a certain we point, you're gonna throw it. As someone holding an oil lamp in front of them. Yeah, and then you know, what's the what's the casualty rate for the people holding the torches? <laughs> that might be an issue here. Uh, Behind the biggest shield, they can fit. <laughs> exactly, like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Behind the wall, right? So you can only see the torch on, like, one hand. <laughs> oh, they're, like, trying to light, like, a lighted, like, someone trying to smoke a cigarette in high wind, and it's like, <laughs> no, 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 it's cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so they got the yeah, thing like, during to the wall. Yeah, I'm trying to see if we can get the... <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think we could, we could deal enough to actually lay it on fire, unfortunately. Alas, alas. But we can, we can at least try to keep them at bay. Yes. So these attacking uh, fortress? So these are, uh, the, when you're building monuments, the game makes you, wants to make you def have to defend them. So it'll, like, armies of these, like, random rebels will just show up and start trying to take control of your monuments. Um, right. actually, okay. <laughs> like, no, the design watch. of this fortress, I, 
we were talking about Buhan earlier. <laughs> Do, doesn't this layout of towers look a little familiar? Mm. Yep. It's, um, I noticed. I was like, oh, it's because we mentioned Buhan. That Jacob's now been like, okay, we'll build Buhan in the desert then. No, you, you can build uh, build fortresses <laughs> and things, but that's um, this one specifically. The idea is like this is the work camp of the of the monument, I think, that's been yeah. rolled off, and you're trying to fight off these rebels before they can destroy the monument itself. <laughs> The monument that is nowhere to be seen, but we we know that it's around. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been built yet, to be entirely fair. Okay, so so like the we we are we are we are defending the foundations of the monument. Yeah, fair. So we are doing foundational work. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, it's it's you know it's one of those mornings. No, I'm always like this. It's not one of those golden mornings. pun number three. <laughs> it's golden pun number three from Kate today. Um, also, the chat is asking where are Legolas and Gimli if we are defending a fortress, you know, from attackers with wall, with, with towers. Actually, admit, well, I actually thought about was um, Chivalry 2. It was like just like every like medieval, not every medieval, but I don't know if you ever watched um, people playing I Chivalry. And just the clash of bodies is kind of what they. When it zooms yeah, into the fighting bodies. Yeah. The Total War series is also famous for that. Uh, you can have mods that make like the uh, the melee even more bloody than like gory. <laughs> if you want. Yes. If you're feeling you know, if you feel inclined. <laughs> I don't think this game has no, that oh, yet. Just the the uh, no, this one this one for now has like mods to reskin some of the units and make their skin darker, which oh, is wow. fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a. I mean, a mod. I assume there's going to be mods to make it lighter as well. That they're going to do both extremes. I haven't seen no? them. I haven't oh, seen yeah. them. So thank goodness. I thank mean, goodness. <laughs> probably going to say, but the historical accuracy, like, because the, the so if you look at these Egyptians, they're not like the most Egyptian looking. If you were to go off of like what the Egyptians depicted themselves in art, or even like modern Egyptians. Yeah, the tan is a bit lacking. Uh, so there's right. those mods that makes the Egyptians kind of a red-brown color, mostly, and the Nubians, like, really dark. Uh, which is more reflective of how they were depicted in Egyptian art, and also just, like, the populations of Egypt and Nubia in general. Uh, now Sudan. But and then there's mods. Series, right? One of go, go, go. Go, go. World War's whole point is, like, oh, it's and cure or like at least authentic game right it's one of the selling points and it's one yeah. of the big debates but then as soon as you put in female generals or anything the um, a certain sector of the gaming community loses its cool oh yes of course oh yeah <laughs> Duh, necessarily i mean that's always accuracy, the case accuracy is right. exclusive rather than accuracy is inclusive yes Yes. Uh, mm. Also, yes, they use a lot of sunscreen. They don't want skin cancer. Well, that's very true. Um, so they're not actually pale. They're just covered in low 50, yeah. 50 protection factor. Kind of white cast. <laughs> yeah, as they should. <laughs> as they should. Um, I like that they're just standing there trying to trying to die. SPF, yes. Just like they are. They come <laughs> off the tower and they just stood there waiting for their turn. It's like, we'll get to the front eventually. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. They're very polite. You know, they're, they're rebels, but they're not barbarians. They're yeah. very polite. Yeah. Jacob. They're like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And some are getting like super tatty and ragged. Is that a reflection of the health of the unit, yes. or is it just as coincidental? The, yeah, as the as the unit takes damage, the, the banner will kind of fall apart. So like our general is still pretty fresh. He only just recently joined, so you can still see it's mostly in order. And then like. The guys who are in the middle of this melee are their their banners are not doing as well, and then the white flashing means they're running away, um, because you know, because white flag. Yeah, they're and and they're they're mod like the people in the game are modeled as like not just you know, mindless drones fighting to the death. Like you have to, they can be made to run away if they get freaked out or outflanked or anything like that. Uh, and then we just have this this nice slow steady barrage from our towers. Uh, that's been very helpful whittling them down. And is the reason we might actually win, even though we are, you know, badly outnumbered and all that. Yeah, and generals sometimes have um, bonuses to increase the morale of their own troops or to scare away the other troops. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a psychological element to the warfare so, here. Kingpin. 
Oh, there's a sandstorm mm -hmm. coming in. I don't know. I don't know whether Ooh. you can choose that. That helps us, I think, more than it, uh... Than it that. definitely helps us. We're behind walls. Crap at the minute about how thick the walls are. <laughs> Sorry, second goal was scored. Let's go! Let's oh, go! Like, like you're really okay. excited by the, um, the, the sandstorm. <laughs> I'm also excited about the sandstorm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Italian football I... then, not some American. Some American American name like soccer. Oh my god. Ah, oh, I'm so <laughs> pleased. I'm so happy. Uh, this this shirt is also 20 years old. So and I still still kind of going. Wow. So yeah, yeah. It, it's lost like it's lost letters. It's yeah. lost pieces. But it's you know. It's like the, it's like it. the banners in the. Game. It's like the banner banners in the game. Yeah, there was yeah, supposed exactly. to be an R here. It's supposed to be Erg, but it's now it's EG. <laughs> for Egypt. Egg. 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 Yes, for exactly. Egypt or the cosmic egg. -g. So, you know. The egg. So what, so what team is... Do you actually support, Kate? This team is Sampdoria. It's the, the team from my hometown. These are our colors. They call us the bikers because the stripes... Oh, you don't see the stripes. The stripes are horizontal. Okay. So we are bikers, uh, uh -huh. but yeah, it's a, it's a team founded on August the 12th, 1946, with the union of two different teams Aww. from Genoa. That's why we have all of these colors, because it's two teams oh, together. Oh, okay, it's the Genoese team. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm from Genoa. Although, you know, with this I, accent... Oh my well, God. Romeo and Juliet in Genoa. No, it's in Verona. No, it's in Verona, in Fair Verona, where we lay ourselves. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Man. Oh, if you want basil or like pesto, like anything is is what Genoa is for. And I was there, I 2013 doing some work at the university. Of course, everything was closed apart from this one tiny restaurant, which looked like someone's living room. Like you walked in and it was like <laughs> felt like someone's home, and it was the most beautiful food. And at the end, they had sorbets and they had basil sorbet. I'm like, that's not interesting, but it sounds weird, and I don't know. Um, but I want some of the other sorbets, and so they bought me out. I ordered something else, but they bought me the basil sorbet. So like, you're here, you have to try it. And oh my word, oh. And down the coast to um, Portofino. Mm. Oh, so, so beautiful. We to see, I guess, what happens when random newbies. We've been defeated valiantly. They they're mostly dead. Um, not all dead. Okay. But mostly dead. The elite Nubian troops, and they outnumbered us what three to one. Yeah. Yeah. We fought, we fought well, and we were we were pummeled, but that's okay. That's not how a sword works, but that's fine. Yeah, some of the, some <laughs> of the, some of the fighting animations, they, like, they try their best. So let's see, do we get, um, oh, so they, they just raid it. Uh, we our, our oh, it's in tatters now. Oh, it's in pieces. That's sad. Like obelisk. Yeah, our black obelisk has been has been pummeled. Take another That's turn, it. repair it, uh, and oh, we yeah. have to go. Go take. Right, you just put some like cellar tape over it, and my blade is keen. Do not be fooled by my. Then they're going to need they're going to need to be repaired once we're done with them. Strength is all that matters. Talking you know. of swords, do you ever have you ever watched Forged in Fire? It's, oh yes, I love I guess, that show. Yeah. You will all fall in line. So the premise is they get four blacksmiths, um, sword knife makers, and um, after a couple of rounds, you're left with two, and they go back and they have a week Wherever to I forge needed. a historic sword. And so they've done um, the Kepesh uh, before, as well as just kind of everything. But when you said that's not how My swords work, and just seeing like the test that they put the swords through at the end, we must um, keep focus. but yeah. Pesches you'll ever see some of these that have been be made. Legend. That's, that's oh, yeah. really interesting. Are they're blacksmiths, but making a kepesh mm -hmm. is a redsmithing. So I'd be With curious me, how they handled man. that. Probably in the first season, because I've recently been re watching Egypt it as something is just like in the background. Um, some of the, obviously, it's 21st century smithing but they um normally make it out of one really lot of iron which they then melt forge rather than 
either of Egyptians either be molded, like done in molds, or done through other techniques. I'm showing limitations of my Egyptian metalworking knowledge. I mean, I don't think any any of us here is an expert, so that's okay. <laughs> Yes, I would. I would love to dig more into it. And unfortunately, I have been informed that I can't audit that class because it takes so much like lab work to do. Um, but that is a thing you can theoretically learn: is all this uh, ancient metalworking stuff. Um, by theoretically, I mean someone with more uh, proper archaeological science training than me. Uh, also, yes, chat. Uh, the obelisk is in, is in pieces, so it is ready for excavation now. <laughs> or we could invent duct tape. Uh, you know, we could mummify the obelisk with duct tape and just, you know, it's as good as new. We will just keep see it. How you do archaeology in total war? That would be uh, a scary, a scary thought because surely you'd have to fight for archaeology as well because that's the. Yes. That's the idea. You can do it in Civ. You can you can do archaeology in Civilization. Really? Uh, yes. I never played Civ. Yeah. You, I'm, I'm not a Civ player. Kind of like, once you're in the modern, kind of like early modern period, you can start, um, you, you can make museums and you can either have art museums or you can have archaeology museums and you can recruit archaeologists. So you need to fill them. And, and send them out to like Ooh. sites where you fought a barbarian in the ancient era, and then you go in with your uh, your archaeologists. Oh, that's to see people coming in. Yep. Ah. These bitches, they're going to Menefer. Yeah. <laughs> Suhor is upon us. Our work has begun. We need to get these guys. What do you think of the voice acting in this? Because I, you, I guess it's not, possible. it's not um, extensive the voice acting, but there's my bits and pieces. It's fine, although I would have loved to hear some actual Egyptian. I fight I oh, have, some actual ancient Egyptian. Yeah. Like, yeah. I have this this vision of like the soldiers, you know, chanting "Sema, Sema," you know. Uh, I do enjoy an origins. In Origins, when you run around and you hit someone and they go, Oh, Necheru! Ah, Necheru! Or Nek! I'm like, excellent. How to um, get some good, strong curse words in there without actually... Exactly. Exactly. But like, in this one, oh, everyone's accent is appropriately, uh, appropriately, you know, not British or New Yorker. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, I I cannot I can you know I I don't know uh, if they have Egyptian voice actors or like Turkish voice actors for the Hittites. I have no idea. Um, it would be cool. It would be interesting. Uh, but the accents seem okay to me. But I'm also an Italian whose accent is very bastardized. So I don't know. Uh, Oh, I good. We've we've fine. killed some people. Ah, yeah, excellent. I want to try and so it's what we need in this fine morning. And deal with uh, deal mm. with these guys are going to be a bit of a problem very soon. So we're pulling. Yeah. Now that we have this area kind of secured, I'm trying to pull as many of My the be the armies that we have into the the delta Mighty and especially into the river yep. and just just deal with the Denyan. Um, yeah, and because, we got him. You know, there's gonna be more waves coming soon. There's gonna be some mm. really bad ones coming soon. Yeah, we... there's a. We ought to be ready. Yeah, there's an incoming wave. Thank goodness we have our husband also on the on the river, so he can My help. Uh, but also those pesky those pesky people in the delta are not doing their job. Every so we gotta, counts. you know. Though, to be fair, you know what that means? Are are capable of just sailing past them? Yeah. Um... Yeah. Yeah, that is why that is why you need to put blockades on the river. Uh, and like literally your boats on the river. That's how I played it like last time. Uh, with I was playing as Ramesses. I put like my generals on boats in every branch of the Nile. So nobody was coming in. And nobody was going out. Which is a Game sinister statement. Them. Like how many has it taken to get to this point and so kind of how long it is they will bleed. Um, okay and this is what probably our fourth stream third or fourth these men will fourth, fight yeah. for my cause fourth um, yeah i so, think yeah, so I, I think like I mean, we're playing it a little more slowly i'd say than average but yeah 12 ish Weakness. hours is probably like 12 to 15 hours Towers. would be a typical campaign to get to the like 
ultimate total war victory or whatever. Right? My army it. will be unstoppable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, you can obtain that, but it's points so based. Total war victory is you beat everyone, or is, you get no. enough points? Yes. Because so, it's points based. Actually, I'll show you our, our victory yeah. screen. That was uh, yeah. There you go. Just, so controlling all the Egyptian homelands gets you some points. Conquering, you know, foreign lands that are outside of it gets you victory points. Uh, controlling and upgrading. Set the for centers. major victory. You've done the minor victory. And then yeah, you got You're 100 points in major, and grand. 140 is the ultimate victory. Uh, getting our our monuments will help us. Getting uh, huge amounts of money helps. Surviving the great invasions helps. Uh, but it's just all about you know how much, how many of these these, these how how great is your kingdom is is basically the determiner. Yeah. yeah, it's a whole lot of building, conquering, like having legitimacy because you need to have legitimacy to have points. So it's not just you conquered everywhere. I mean, if you conquer everywhere, then you're gonna get the victory. But like you also need to build stuff. Yeah, and you'll probably win before you've conquered everything. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can you can win you can win without even conquering the whole of Egypt. Like completely not knowing what the game was gonna like, premise. Remember. I was like, New Kingdom, okay, so you're just gonna be I fighting fight in the northeast and against external I didn't actually realize Journey or expect all the fighting to be fight civil through. war and inside. Yes. And so, now once you've gotten these unified it's usually pretty good to go for the Canaan and get some more resources and build your prestige and all that, but yeah. Egypt's greatness, but you also need to deal because the Libu will keep coming in so you need to keep dealing with like internal issues you know and then you have the Nubian rebels and then you have other issues so it's always like y there needs to be some balance uh, but it's it's done in a smart way and it was an interesting choice because it would have been very easy to go like with the new kingdom propaganda and just have yeah Ramesses is the second and like the grand campaign is against the Hittites right and yet and yeah, Ramesses and go. Okay, let's not be super obvious. Let's go to Moses the first. Yeah, the blueprint, and you go all the way up to the Euphrates, right? And you know. Yes, and and we hunt elephants. The greatness and, I do, and we bring back chicken. I do wonder. Is I wonder if they're for our campaign. If it's gonna be now that you mention it, if it'll be Akmos. Ooh, I would love that. But can we use Grandma as one of the generals? Yes, uh, you, you have to have uh, Ahmos Nefertari as an Ahotep. Yes. Forward, Beating the crap out of people. That's what we need, right? But yeah, it would be interesting to see um, if the... Ibana, get some... Yes. yes. You can actually rename generals. Yes. So you, you could have, you know, Ahmos as son of Ibana. As, as one of your generals. We've been um, renaming them. That's cool. We like so yeah, many yeah. as well, right? He's from Akmosi <laughs> up to Moses. The first? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. He's spanning that 17th dynasty uh, pains against the Hyksos. And yeah. then you yeah. can see, you know, Kantir. Or, um, oh. That would be lovely. That's that's a game I would like to play as a Moses son of Ibana. That's a game I would love to play. Like an RPG? Yes, please. <laughs> like a campaign like that. Tomb. If you build your yes. tomb, if you build your tomb in Alcab, you're fine. And then exactly, exactly. Yeah, like um. It seems oh, this is a spoiler for next week. Have you played Pentiment? Okay, so we are starting to stream Pentiment next week. Because guess what? It's Ready not on. Back. It's only PC and Switch, I think. Uh, it's on Xbox, too. Soft. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, play I'm playing it through the, the Xbox thing. But like in Pentiment, you get to paint the whole story, but you need to make choices on how to paint it. So, you know, it's kind and at the end, it's the painting. So that would be that would be a great thing. There's been a red card for um, Okay, yeah, it's one of them. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think Egypt. Kate Cook had um, um, did quite a bit about Pentiment when it first came out, and I saw lots of people mess it, um, discussing it. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. It looks so cool, but it's a I'm great not game. About new. <laughs> no, that's fair. It's that's a fair. Microsoft well, exclusive, so um, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. I'm well, sure if you want, if you want to see switch. it, if you want to see it. 
We're playing it, yeah, we're playing it. And actually, our first guest is going to be Kate Cook. So <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to say, like, is Kate doing it? Because I'm sure other people have played yeah. it as well. But yeah, Kate certainly had, um, was one of the people when it first came out. Oh, yeah, no, she's, she's going to be here. We messaged her actually, like, yesterday and today, and we're trying to decide. Um, like, we're trying to figure out, like, on which day she can. She can stream it, uh, and I'll be at the commands, because it's, it's a great game. Um, and the other and the other two guys that are part of the team cannot play th those games those days, so I'm like, uh, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> for me. Uh, I mean, it's uh, not as if I platinum that game. Yeah. Last year uh, when I to Heaven's Fault and Alex has asked if I could join, but it was just really bad timing for me. Um, whenever. Um, but yeah, I think I've played Heaven's Fault like three times to track different routes. And I, there you go. <laughs> 3-0? Sorry. 3 nil. 3 nil. Oh my god. I can't believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. It may be. It may be. It's it's just one of those that like the ball bounces and then it's on the line. It's not on the line. I don't care. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if the if the referee explodes. Uh, because the thing vibrates. So, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> in the meantime, um, I've played, I think I've played Heaven's Vault eight times. Ow. Because I wanted to, I wanted to like get as many words. What and... I want to do is because I played it on the PlayStation, but the Switch has a bigger um, dictionary. It's got like three thousand more words. It's got like the biggest uh, one, and so I've been thinking about while I dislike Beauty. Nintendo. Um, a lot of indie games are ported onto the Switch before any other console thinking of getting it and then starting. My only one issue is that I'm really impatient and I love Heaven's Fault. It's with how slow it is and like the first time you play it fine, but when you want to just like play it again and again and again and try just and... Just get to the point and it's like slow and you're like, just, yeah. just and, like, talk I to get me. It. Like slow it down, don't rush. But I've been thinking a lot, like I spoke Not about, I gave a paper on this a while ago, Hold which um, Alex had come to, I think during the lockdown. Um, and I've spoken with Jane Draycott about it because, you know, the whole point is that it's perceived as this, like, it's a good archaeology game, you know, and it's based on Monica Hannah's, one of the most important mm -hmm. um, inspirations for um, the protagonist. And for me, I don't think it's a good archaeology game. I think it's a really, In I think it's a colonial game. You've got the university which controls the surrounding places. She's torn between being part of, like, one of the colonies, the but then working for the university and university privilege going out and just taking what she wants, which she's interested in. It's a she good, it's a good it. RPG with that, because you're like, you're, you're like, you have to make choices, you're like, how much of a shield do you want to be for the colonial so, power? And can, I think it's really interesting, kind of this question of belonging, I think there's so many interesting things, but I think ultimately, you know, you can say it as you know, trying to be a good archaeologist, give everything to the library and archive it. To and the worst oh, thing that happens is the librarian is like, "Oh, um, I think, like you keep on taking a lot of stuff." And you're like, "No, no, it's cool. I've not finished with it yet. You can get it when I'm ready." Uh, just go and sell everything and try and get better stuff or different stuff in your kind of vociferous you, you, you appetite. You it. <laughs> and, and like the slave trade, right? And your home planet and yeah, um, how that works out. I think there's so many interesting things on it, but for me, it's for the like, court, like she is Never not, I don't know, like my, every time I play her, I'm like, she's just out for like this colonial, like grasp for knowledge, I am busy um, like right pursuit now. for knowledge and what she can get, like who cares about Egypt different steps in getting there but yeah, I think Heaven's Fault is fantastic and that's why like yeah with Chance of Sanaa at the moment night. it's that's that's gonna be that's probably yeah. going to be like one of the next All games we play uh, and I'm, I'm trying to not beautiful. watch yeah I'm trying to not watch anything because I want to go in blind I played the demo I played it oh you only played it I played the demo yesterday I downloaded mm -hmm. it a while ago and I played the demo yesterday and then I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to have to now... 
Yeah, no, I played, I played, I played the demo, and I was like muttering to myself, and I was like, open, close, run, blah blah blah, and I was, I got weird, weird side eye from my wife. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm not watching anyone else play it. Right. I want to go in, to go in completely blind. It is. Uh, it is noon. I think I have to get going. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. I'm meeting someone. For oh yes. Uh, but we have. Oh uh, no no no. Yes. So what what did we do? Yeah, so what, how see, much are, have we, we conquered? We are now in control of the whole river valley, other than other than very annoyingly this <sighs> like one little settlement of Ramses. Is, um, well, we have we have some sea people that we're gonna have to deal with as the the Danyen are showing up, which is kind of annoying. Some of them have decided to mess around around Huntmen, uh, but other than that, we're I think we're in a pretty secure position to take control of the Delta and become uncontested power of Egypt and uh, maybe meet up Ramses the Third a little bit. We'll have you know, to. We'll have he, to beat uh, him up. So, so he think he he's seems on this to be map is the third. Well, no, he's just Ramses. Yes. He's just called Ramses, but it is Ramses the third. So. But he's the third one. He's the third one, and he's um yeah, he's uh, wait um can we can we show uh Jenny the the various the various characters? Yes. Like yes. pretend to start a new campaign. We're gonna show you. We're gonna show you the characters because you're gonna you're gonna see. Yes, you can see Talzret with her. Gloves. This is Talzret. She's some really nice cool. Gloves. So you have. She's great. Here's Ramses. Okay, uh, it's nice. Um, side lock of youth. Yeah, which he, he loses once he comes Pharaoh. You get um. <laughs> once he goes Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh, then <laughs> Seti. Crown uh, Prince of Egypt. And then of course Talzred, who we've seen. We must be ruled I love also like, the lotus flowers, all very cool. Uh, She's great. And then Amon Mass wearing. Uh, oh, who? He's the eye candy. Um. Uh, this then, is like the 300 just oh, exploded. Yeah. Yeah. In chaos. Yes. Uh, Irsu, is the the game plays up the Egyptian propaganda about Irsu. I don't I don't believe that this is true, but you know that's what you get. It's the Kool Aid. It's and it's then, Egyptian Kool Aid. Bay, the the okay, uh, but get get the get the godly skin for Bay, and you'll see how much better he looks. Oh yes. Like. Looks come like on. he's in Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Exactly. This exactly. Is Look at Irsu. Game. Look at your suit. Looks like oh, he's like a Norwegian. I like that. Actually, we should go to the <laughs> Ramses has yeah. robbed. Oh, oh. That's actually kind of cool. I like the makeup. Will grovel at my huh. feet. That's a choice. And then Amon Mess. Medieval bull. And they've come in with. And of course, you have the yes. nice Chipilioma with his trident. Uh, oh, or that's in cool. his regular skin. Which. This hat is a little, it's a little much. He's claiming divinity with his hat, but you know, that's fine. And then Karunta. Let the hunt begin. Who's, you know, he doesn't look that different. No, that's the thing, he's, he's, already, he's already in God cosplay. It's uh, the antler's agenda, it's the antler's agenda. <laughs> yes. Uh, but all right, I so, think that is, uh, that is it oh, yeah. for yeah, no. So. It's that was that was uh we, there was a lot of talking about games and I'm so happy that you know that we finally we finally got this. Yeah, it was really good. Um, cool. yeah. yeah, no, it was it was great being here all together. Thank you, chat, for being for being all uh for being very active. Also, who doesn't love a good set of antlers? You're talking to the right woman, but unfortunately <laughs> we are out of time. Otherwise you would hear about Valka. Yes. Um so thank you everyone <laughs> for showing up. You 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 knew it had to come. Yes. Um, next week we may have Pentiment instead of Pharaoh for, you know, programming reasons. But if you're around, you know, and you wanna hear us, you know, you wanna you wanna see me simp for uh, like metaphysically simp for nuns, then that's the <laughs> you know that's your chance. <laughs> and then we will start with Pharaoh again, but respectfully simp. Uh, we will start with Pharaoh again on um, the next Saturday, mm -hmm. and we will be here again at 10 a.m. We will have Brianna. We may Brianna. Will we have the cat next week? Like in two weeks? Oh gosh, that's a, I hope so. I hope. I hope. We hope that the we'll we hope that King Muatali will be here to join us again. Um, and yeah, yeah, so thank you everyone, and we will be we will be off for now. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Jenny. This was a ball. Uh, if you ever want to, you know, come around, you can. You can. If when you... the book is out, then, uh, you are invited. I want to. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut, and I will. As you play, no spoilers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we will probably play it like in January, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right, so thank you, everyone. Bye.